Everyone looks at food cost and they, they, t they take the standard approach and they look at food as food, but I would challenge you to look at food as dollars, look at food as cash. Think about not letting cash walk out the door. We talk about everything being important and everything mattering in the operation in the kitchen and conveying that to the staff and helping them understand that the garbage bag, the, the produce in the walk-in, the, the food in the garbage bin, all of that has a cost associated with it. And managing that cost is important because the impact that it will have on them and their coworkers is significant. The more money that we lose in areas means less money that we could spend in other areas. If we're spending too much money on trash bags, that might mean that we can't buy the pots and pans that we need. Instilling a sense of fiscal responsibility in the team and helping them understand uh, where the money goes and why it goes there and understanding the percentage breakdown of, of why your food cost is this, why your labor cost is this, why your uh, operating expenses are, are this. When everyone understands the bigger picture, everyone is now participating in it and everyone is now contributing to it and contributing to the bottom line. So a question I like to ask people all the time is, what's the most expensive thing on your menu? And everyone always says, oh, it's the T-bone steak, it's the foie gras, it's the lobster. And I would challenge you to say that's not the most expensive thing on your menu. The most expensive thing is the thing that goes in the trash because you're making zero money off of it. And instead of throwing it in the trash, what can you do with it? Can you turn it into compost? And how can you look at the things that are bringing you uh, no revenue into how can they become a revenue stream? When we're talking about food cost, it's a really simple formula. It's the total cost of everything that you're purchasing. And if you want to find out your food cost percent, it's your total cost. So your total purchases divided by your total sales or your total revenue, and that'll give you your food cost percent. And this is the basic calculation that most chefs and restaurants use to determine how profitable a business is going to be because all the other costs associated are usually pretty fixed and, and food cost is going to be the one biggest variable that you're going to have. That's a really basic way to look at food cost. The real way to look at food cost would be uh, beginning inventory plus your purchases minus your closing inventory and that'll give you your total consumption. And that total consumption then divided by revenue gives you your true food cost. And a lot of places are different. Some people manage their food costs by the day. Some people manage it by the month. Some people don't manage it at all. And then their restaurant's closed. I think it's very important to make sure that you have standards for everything because every single ounce up or down it could be a, a big variable on the sliding scale. If you're cutting your steaks and you're going one ounce over, and maybe that's a dollar an ounce, for example, every time that you go one ounce over, if you do that over the course of a year, you could be looking at thousands of dollars of loss just by not paying attention to how large the portion size is. So if you want to cut costs, another way to look at it is you could also shrink down uh, an ounce. In certain cases, an ounce here and an ounce there doesn't get noticed by the customer. You pay attention to what's coming back on the plates in the kitchen and you notice that they don't eat so much of a particular dish. Then you say, we could shave an ounce off that steak or we could shave an ounce off the fish. That may mean uh, a one ounce savings could sometimes be $40,000 over the course of the year when you look at really big uh, culinary operations. When you're writing a menu, I think the first thing that you have to understand is what your food cost is on something. And once you've determined what the food cost is, then you have to determine what you're going to sell it for. The most basic formula that we use is we take the cost of something and then you divide that by the percent that you're trying to achieve. For example, if something costs $5 and you're trying to reach a 20% food cost, your formula would be $5 uh, divided by 0.2, and that'll tell you what you should sell it at. That's roughly the basic principle when it comes to figuring out your menu price. Now, with that being said, you have to learn how to play with that number because if you're running a 20%, it might tell you you need to sell something very inexpensive for more than the, the market's really willing to pay for it. So you may have to lower menu price on certain items and you may have to raise menu price on other items just to balance it out. And so that's why you may have a mix of items on your menu that some items may be running a 10% food cost and other items may be running a 40% food cost. But in the end, you would do something called a theoretical food cost to find out uh, what your total menu food cost is would be based on what projected sales would be on every item. Why does food cost matter? You have so many variables when it comes to pricing. You may be dealing with inflation, prices are changing, but if you know your costs through and through, you can make really good business decisions. And 
I would say that food cost is really the one measurement that it's going to affect all the other uh, things that come in line. So when we're talking about labor cost or other controllable expenses, usually all of those are going to be built around what your food cost percent is. So if you want to protect your profitability and you want to protect your bottom line, uh, you need to know exactly uh, what your food cost is, what your goals are, and uh, how to meet those goals. And when you're missing that food cost goals, I, I think you need to do a really good deep dive into understanding why you missed your food cost goal. So just like calculating your food costs, you also want to know what your labor costs are. So depending on the type of restaurant you have, you may run a higher labor cost because you may have more complex food, or you may run a lower labor cost because uh, your food is less complex. So understanding what those costs are, I would say is going to be the second most important thing when you're starting to design your budget with food costs being the most important thing. Basic labor cost is basically calculated like this. Uh, it's the exact same formula as you, you use for food cost, except you're going to substitute the labor for the food. So it's your cost, your labor cost divided by revenue, and that'll, that will equal your labor cost percent. So in the kitchen, we have other expenses. So these may be what we'd call operating costs, and it may be trash bags, gloves, chemicals, dishwasher detergent. And I think it's really important to understand that this cost shouldn't be as much as labor cost. It shouldn't be as much as food cost, but it is a significant cost. A lot of people look at that as depending on what your business model is, you're looking at anywhere between five and 10%. If you have a garbage bag and you only fill it up one third and you throw it away, then your cost on garbage bags is going to be basically three times more expensive. And once people understand that, it starts to make a little bit of a switch and understanding that all these other things uh, need to be managed as well. So it's not just the food cost. It's not just uh, the labor cost, that everything that we're working with to produce the end result costs money. And once you start uh, training your staff to understand that it all costs money, that's when you start to see the results um, uh, in financial savings and financial responsibility, not just from yourself, but from the other members on the team.